I was talking about um, microsatellite instability and its applications for treatment. Um, so in my talk, I've sort of explained to people what microsatellite instability is and how it's a potentially key target that we can um, focus treatments on in gynecological cancers. I think the key message for my talk is that microsatellite instability is common in endometrial cancer and that's something that people aren't always aware of. It occurs at about 25 to 30 percent of all endometrial cancer cases and for the majority of those cases it's an acquired thing that can happen over time and it's something that we need to test patients for at relapse. It's also done as part of diagnosis because it uh, is associated with a risk of a genetic syndrome called Lynch syndrome. But I think for the majority of patients we're talking about something that could be acquired and therefore when patients relapse it could be tested on in their cancers and it could have implications for treatment. Um, in endometrial cancer specifically it's a huge area of unmet need. Um, there's no standard of care for endometrial cancer beyond first line treatment. So when patients relapse, they're very limited treatment options. Um, if indeed, you know, 25% of these women have microsatellite instability high levels, then we could potentially look at targeting that. And we've already got early phase trial data showing that immune checkpoint inhibitors um, such as pembrolizumab and um, TSR042, which also presented as part of my talk, um, show high levels of activity in these, in these cancers. So this is data from early trials, small numbers of patients, but it's a huge area of exploration for endometrial cancer and an opportunity obviously to treat patients where there are no, no standard of care. And in the, and in the um, Garnet study, um, this was presented at AACR this year. There was a poster presentation and it showed nearly 50% of patients getting a partial response to treatment with single agent TSR042. And this is, as I say, in an area where there is no standard of care. So these studies are very early, um, lots of data will come uh, in larger numbers of patients, but I think that we need to be testing endometrial cancer patients for microsatellite instability. Um, there are various ways in which that can be done, uh, but I think the first stage is, a, is, a, is, a is for the national groups you know, to put pressure on all of our institutions that this should be standard of care, that women should have access to this testing, and that's currently not the case. NICE recommend um, testing in colorectal cancer patients. So anyone with colorectal cancer can have a uh, mismatch repair deficiency testing um, and microsatellite instability testing and that's sort of, it should be standard of care. Um, I think this whole area in endometrial cancer is just sort of probably not been thought about and considered, whereas I think a lot of patients will present with endometrial cancer and then they won't have the opportunity to have this test done. So I think we can, we've got the ability to do it, so funding will be an issue, um, and it needs to probably come as a sort of national guidance that all women should have the testing. The uh, ASCO guidelines support this in endometrial cancer, so it's not just coming you know, from the UK, it's an, an international sort of drive, really. It depends what you're doing the test for. So if you're doing the test to establish the risk of Lynch syndrome, which is this genetic syndrome that's associated with it, then probably you can do the same test regardless of cancer type. So you can probably do immunohistochemical staining or you can do um, MSI, PCR testing. If you're looking at treatment options and sort of biomarkers for response to treatment, then this may be done better through next generation sequencing panels where you're looking at lots of different genes because obviously different cancer types might have different genetic abnormalities associated with this. So I think we can learn a lot from colorectal cancer, but we, need to, we can't just extrapolate it all to gynae cancers. So I think we need to look at all of the, the sort of data rather than just sort of say, oh, we'll copy the same thing. The main thing is, you know, endometrial cancer, no standard of care, very little treatment options, and this is a definite avenue of, of, that we should be exploring. But first of all, we need to establish testing. Mm -hmm.